Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.5.6 and Razbam Sims AV8B Harrier module. This is a quick tutorial on the startup procedure for the Harrier uh, when positioned on a FARP and this is accurate as of the 5th of January 2021. Uh, it may be the case that as time goes on things will change in the module as happens uh, sometimes and uh, it may be necessary in the future for me to make an updated version of this video but this is certainly accurate as of now so this is not um, a tutorial using the official Harrier manuals or anything like that this is the procedure that I use uh, and some members of the Virtual Air Force use in starting up the Harrier when positioned at a FARP so um, without further ado let's get started and I've broken this into sections um, so we're going to first establish power to the aircraft. Now because we're not at an airfield we don't have the availability of a ground power unit. We do have some cows though. Um, but anyway, <laughs> let's, uh, let's do a start up using the APU. So establishing power, we're first going to take a little, oops, take a little look down here at the right hand console. And on the right hand console we're going to turn on the battery And we're going to then jump over to the left console kind of rear section and we're going to turn on uh, the fuel shutoff valve here. We're going to turn the DECS on, which is the digital engine control system. We're going to ensure that the fuel proportioner is on and we're going to turn on left and right fuel pumps. So at this stage, the fuel system is pressurized and we're ready to do an APU start. And we can establish uh, APU power by clicking APU Gen to the on position. And you're then going to hear the APU fire up. And then we should get some warnings. Generator, and we have generator. Generator, generator. So, cancel your master generator. caution and uh, master warning, and that will turn off the audio alerts. We now have power established to the aircraft. So, next thing we're going to do is turn on the displays. So, left MPCD, brightness all the way up. Right MPCD, brightness all the way up. Heads up display, brightness all the way up. Uh, the UFC, the up front controller here, brightness all the way up. And we're also going to, at this stage, turn on and tune our radios. So COM1 is powered on by simply turning the volume up. COM2 uh, in the same fashion. Uh, and for today's flight COM1, we're going to use preset number one. That's our flight channel. Uh, COM2, we're going to use preset number two. And we're using that for uh, air to ground radio just now. So next thing we're going to do is turn on the aircraft lights. Uh, so we have internal lights here on the right console. So I'm going to turn console lighting on full, turn on a bit of instrument panel lighting, and might as well do full floods just now. Uh, this is a, a backup radio head. I, I, it's not really simulated in the game right now, but I tend to turn it on to transmit and receive plus guard. Something else we're going to do is go over to the left console, and that's where the external lighting is found. We've got a master mode switch here. We're going to put it all the way forward for normal. It has positions for normal, NVG compatible, and off. We're then going to turn formation lights full on. We're going to turn uh, position lights to full brightness. And we'll leave the anti-collision lights until we do an engine start. At this stage, we're also going to turn on the oxygen just because we're here. And I'm now going to go facing forwards again. And I'm going to pay particular attention to the uh, left MPCD, where I'm going to bring up the uh, the EHSD page. And this is our primary navigation page. Uh, as you can see, there is absolutely nothing presented on that page just yet because our INS system is not powered on. So the next section for startup is INS alignment. So to achieve that, we're going to go to data and then we're going to go to aircraft. And this is where we can input starting position information for the aircraft. I'm just going to shift our view across a little bit here so that the UFC is better in view. 
and I'm going to bring up our knee board. And the knee board is always going to confirm to your initial position. Latitude, longitude, and magnetic variation are the things we care about. Currently, we don't need to enter altitude. I don't know if that's realistic or not. They may add that later. So, on the ODU, which is the left-hand section of the UFC, we want to make sure that we've selected position. And we're going to go 2 for north. Oh, select position again. 2 for north. There we go. N is confirmed. And we want to enter exactly what we've got in the knee board. So, in this case, 2. Six, one, four, three, seven. Enter. That will be confirmed on the EHSD. We're then going to press position again, and now we want the easting, so we're going to press six for east, and exactly as it is here, zero, five, six, one, eight, five, one. Enter. Again, confirm that it's on the display. And the last thing we need to enter is magnetic variation. So we choose that on the ODU. Again, it's 6 for east, and it's 1.8. Enter. And again, that's now displayed there. We can now put away our knee board. So with all of that initial position information entered, we can go down to the uh, the power switches that we've got here, below the behind the uh, stick, and you'll see that we've got an INS master mode. We're going to turn caution, that to caution. INS ground align. Caution, caution. We're going to get a caution for a few moments. Caution, caution. I'm actually going to cancel it. Uh, and you'll see quality, attitude, not okay. After a few moments, the attitude will become okay. Uh, and then alignment proper will begin. So I'm just going to give that a few more moments to run so that you can see what that looks like before we carry on. For some reason, I've seen this happen a few times, I'm not sure what causes it, our COM2 has reset back to manual. So let's uh, pop that back into preset number 2, which is where I wanted it to be. So we're still showing attitude not okay. Eventually the attitude will be okay, and then INS alignment proper will begin. And there we go. So we now have a uh, countdown and it says HDG. So basically we now have heading information, but the position is not complete. I'm going to leave this on screen uh, while alignment continues and uh, we will proceed with our startup. So the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, program our avionics. So you would usually take this opportunity to program such uh, items such as your TACAN. So for today's mission, we're using one X-ray as our TACAN, I'm going to press ON, and that TACAN is now ON. Um, IFF is not simulated as yet. AWL is uh, the it's kind of like an ILS landing system. Uh, we're not using that for today's mission either. Altitude, currently we've got altitude ON, warning altitude 500 feet, uh, and uh, GPWS full functionality is enabled. So that's pretty much it for over there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, come to the right-hand side here. We're going to turn on our radar warning receiver. I'm going to put the volume kind of low because it can be annoying. Expendables, this is for flare and chaff dispensers. We're going to put that into automatic. And in here we've got the ECM pod power switches. We're going to leave that in the off position for just now. We're then going to come back down to the switches behind the stick. And we're going to make sure that we turn on DMT and turn on FLIR. And then we can put that back in position. And then we'll look back up to see how we're getting on with alignment. I'm also going to turn on the brightness for the uh, the engine display here. And in preparation for an engine start, I will bring up engine instruments on the right MPCD. Okay, and alignment is now complete. You can see the, the result here is that quality says 0 0.7. Okay. So we can come out of the data page Okay, that's just what it displays while it's in the line, I guess. Um, so we can now go back down to the INS master switch and put it into IFA. You've got the option of putting it in NAV or IFA. In NAV mode, it will just use the INS on its own. In INS, in, sorry, in IFA, <laughs> so many acronyms, you couple the GPS and the INS, and so it will correct for drift.
So we put it into IFA, we will get a caution for INS and it will flash, but that will disappear momentarily. And it's gone. Okay, so INS is now fully aligned with GPS, and you'll see that now we have a normal display showing up here. Uh, and even if I go to map mode, I'm going to turn off, oops, turn off the map, which I can do by clicking here. I'm going to turn on overlay one, which shows uh, tanker positions, and I'm going to turn on sequence, and it'll show our waypoint positions. Uh, and you can cycle this by pressing the cycle mode. I'm going to leave it in automatic just now. Okay, so with that done, we're now ready for an engine start. So. Uh, for engine start, all that we have to do, we've already got uh, the fuel valve open, DECS on, uh, and and so basically we're ready to begin an immediate uh, engine start. So go down to the left console, turn on the anti-collision light. Now we're going to go to the right console and flip the engine start switch. Caution, caution. We're now going to look at the engine instruments. The APU already started. If we just immediately flipped engine start, it would have first had to start the APU and then start the engine. The engine is immediately spooling up. We get it to 9. You can hear the igniters. What to do is to move your throttle out of cutoff just by shifting it forward slightly and then back. And we're now spooling. The stage gets run out, so let's close the camera. Left control and C closes the canopy. And it's spooling up. And it's stabilised at 28.5. Okay. Uh, and if we bring our view up a little bit here. Apparently I can bring my view up a little bit here. What's going on? Okay, that's a bit better. And so, here we are. If I bring my view up to here, uh, you can see that uh, it stabilizes at about 29, and nozzle is defaulting to 10 degrees. That's the correct position to leave it for now. Uh, great. So, uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that uh, all of the uh, hydraulic and flight control systems are on. They're mostly uh, on the left control, uh, on the, sorry, the left, uh, left console and in the area left of the main uh, cockpit control panels. So the first thing we're going to do is switch flaps to on. We're going to switch uh, anti-skid to on. We're going to switch the uh, RPS and yaw system to on. Uh, and at that stage, the standard flight controls are set up correctly. Uh, we're now going to go to the right-hand MPCD, and we're going to make our preparations for takeoff. So we're going to go menu, we're going to press V rest, and today we're going to do a short takeoff, so STO. So I'm pressing STO, and we'll just zoom down on that a little bit, and it will give us the information that we require for our takeoff today. So uh, our uh, basically our rotate speed today is 94 knots. Uh, nozzle stop should be set for 55 degrees, uh, and it gives us some information about ground roll and things like that. I don't actually know what these are in, so I'm going to disregard these. Um, but uh, the thing that we're mostly interested in is uh, yeah, rotation speed and nozzle position. So as the last part of the startup, we're going to set the aircraft up ready for that. So we're going to look down here at our nozzle stop and we're going to flip it forward to 95 degrees as, as the system told us. We're going to make sure that our flaps are in STOL mode. That means they'll sit at 25 degrees but then as we start to move the nozzle position, they beyond uh, about 35 degrees nozzle, they will then start to move with the nozzle up to 61 degrees. And we top out at 55 on the nozzle anyway. Anyway, let's put the nozzle back to where it was. Uh, and then we also want to make sure that our takeoff H2O switch, sorry, our H2O switch is in the takeoff position. That will increase ground idle a little bit, and it will also mean that uh, water injection will automatically engage uh, above a certain throttle setting. And you can see that H2O here uh, is at 500 volts. Okay, and that concludes startup. The aircraft will now be ready to taxi and take off using the grass uh, runway back. 
So, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial video on starting up a Harrier from a farm. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.